dass sich ihr Gesundheitszustand verbessern wird? Ja. Eye tracking methods for communication have been around for some time. Their use in the intensive care unit is new, however. At the BG University Hospital, Bergmans Heil, a study provides crucial insights into how seriously injured patients really feel. The team wanted to find out whether intensive care patients could use their gaze to access functions on the screen and what insights they could gain. Fundamentally, we can draw the conclusions that this technique is suitable for critically ill patients in the intensive care unit. The technique is suitable for all patients who are intubated and respirated and for whom conventional instruments, which are also used intensively in daily care, are no longer suitable, especially if there is a lack of nonverbal communication options such as lip reading, eye blinks, or boards on which patients can show what is wrong with them. The next conclusion was that we were not always right in our fixed strategies of treatment, which are always individually adapted. Many patients had pain despite a needs-based analysis that they had received according to a fixed scheme, for example, during transfer or in general. It was impressive to see that we were relatively often wrong with our subjective external assessments. An important point was also the family support. Three quarters of the patients said that they were very happy to have their family around. We naturally used this resource to make their stay here as pleasant as possible and perhaps even to shorten it. The eye tracking system consists of cameras, light sources, and software programs. It emits near-infrared light that is reflected by the viewer's eyes. Algorithms use this to calculate the direction of gaze. Patients can then answer questions on the screen. The team had to come up with several ideas to ensure that the devices also work on intensive care beds and can easily be used by staff. The challenge is that the whole system is not commercially available for the intensive care units, so we first had to adapt the whole setting to the patient, who is in the lying or at least only half-sitting position. The tubes, for example, the probes that come out of the nose, were in the way of the field of vision. So we had to clear the field of vision for the patient here as well. We had to construct a device so that the tracking screen screen could be positioned in front of the patient at the right distance and the right angle. The goal is that not just the examiner, but also the nursing staff and the other medical therapists can use it, who then also must be instructed accordingly. So the training required should not be underestimated. And even though the devices are not high-end technologies, there are some costs to the hospital. Purchasing the system for our research project cost over 20,000 euros. The software then lasts for two years, for which you then receive the corresponding updates. But if you want to extend it, it costs another 1,000 euros. Now, how can you reimburse that? Or how do you get money back as a hospital? If you want to charge for it, you won't get reimbursed in the health insurance system, of course. And to that extent, it will have to be offset by the general costs. In addition, there's the question of how many such systems do I need? Also, I can't keep moving such a system from room to room, from patient to patient, because there are certain basic hygienic requirements that must be met. It also takes a certain amount of time. Lastly, it is of course difficult when you first give it to the patients, and then they leave the intensive care unit but still can't communicate freely, and then suddenly no longer have this ability to communicate on the ward. The added value for the patient is, of course, that he feels he is taken seriously, that he can get out of this loss of control, and that he can actively intervene in the therapy. Further, if you were to apply this to a long-term chronic patient who is chronically ventilated, then of course a completely different integration of the patient into the environment would be possible. Now that the study has come to such an insightful end for them, the doctors already have ideas on how to proceed with the technology. The vision is that patients will be able to control this device themselves with their eyes and that patients will be able to stream films just as you would control a computer with your fingertips or a touchscreen. They will be able to surf the internet, even with word recognition, program support, chat more easily and communicate even outside the hospital. 
Yes, of course, it would be a dream to have this technology on a cell phone so that you don't need such a large computer suite, that you have a small tablet, and that the software is developed in such a way that you can automatically operate the computer, the tablet, and the keyboard with eye contact and then communicate. And it would be even nicer if a speech recognition system could be connected, so that the words that the patient types are also spoken. So these are ideas and perhaps also challenges for IT, for developers, for researchers to join us in user-orientated research at an early stage. We would at least be open to this.